first time that I was like, oh my goodness, classroom management, what is this? <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to my cozy chat today. I am thinking we're gonna chat a little bit about why I became a teacher and then why I am still a teacher. I feel like everything I've been seeing nowadays is why I quit teaching, why I quit teaching, why I left teaching, why I'm taking a break from teaching. And I just want to put a little like positivity. I'm not like, I totally, totally, totally understand and support everyone who is making those decisions. But I also do sometimes feel like, oh my goodness, should I be quitting teaching when I see all of these people quitting teaching? And I just want to stop and reflect on the reasons why I am still a teacher, why I still love this career. So that's what we're going to chat about today. If you're new here, my name is Victoria and I am a seventh year third grade teacher in Maine. I'm also a mom to a one year old who currently has hand, foot and mouth. So that's why we're chatting on a Friday night instead of doing like a whole week long vlog because it's been a week. <laughs> but that's okay. I think this will be really fun to chat about and I can't wait to just tell you all my story and why I am a teacher and then share why I'm still a teacher. And I would just like to hear from you all too, like why are you interested in being a teacher or why are you a teacher? What lights you up? Why are you still in this field? Um, obviously it's a challenging one, but it's a really worthwhile one. So please comment down below and just share what you're enjoying in the career and what you're looking forward to and so on. So that's what we're gonna chat about today. I'm sipping on some tea as we chat and I can't wait to just have a cozy chat. So let me tell you a little bit about why I became a teacher. All right, so why did I become a teacher? I became a teacher because mostly the kids. I knew I loved working with kids and I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. And I knew that they were just so fun and they brought so much joy and excitement and happiness to your days. And I just wanted that. I wanted to work with kids and be surrounded by that fun and positivity. Um, then another reason why I wanted to be a teacher is I loved the creativity of it. I loved coming up with different ideas for lessons and thinking of different ways that you can engage kids and kind of seeing also the kids understand something after not understanding something, like seeing that growth and what the magic that learning is. I knew that I really enjoyed that and wanted to be a part of that. And then I feel like the other big reason why I wanted to be a teacher is I just really, really, really enjoyed the chance and concept of every day being different. I loved that one day was not like another, that every single day you might have same the same routine, but you're not just sitting at a computer all day, that you're up and moving and doing different things. I loved that. So those were the three things that really brought me to the career. So let me just give you a little like history backstory about my teaching career. And then I'll talk to you a little bit about why I'm still teaching. A little story, a little backstory on how I became a teacher, like what led me to the career. I was a swimmer. I swam from when I was eight years old through college. It was like my passion and my love. And I became a swimmer. And when you're like finding jobs in high school, 
the job that all swimmers did was they were lifeguards and swim instructors. So I tried that out. And from there, I found out that I loved working with kids. I loved being a part of the process of seeing kids learn how to swim and just having so much fun with interacting with them. So from there, I took an elective my senior year and I helped in a kindergarten classroom and I loved it. It was the highlight of my day. I worked in there for like an hour and a half every day and it was just so much fun and I learned so much from the teacher and the kids and I just was like, yep, this is it. I love this. Obviously, I didn't see all pieces of teaching when I was doing that. Like I didn't see the lesson planning piece. I didn't see all of the behavioral pieces, but I just loved the kids. I, I loved the kids. And that was the big reason that I was like, yep, I'm doing this. So from there, I went to college and was like, yep, I'm an elementary ed major. So every summer while I was in college, I was a camp counselor. And originally when I helped with that kindergarten classroom, I thought I really wanted to work with young kids. And then I got in my camp counselor job working with like fourth and fifth graders. And I was like, mm, not so sure about this, but I gave it a shot and I loved it. I loved the kids and I loved their independence. So then, throughout my college experience, I wasn't really sure what grades I was interested in, but I specifically remember like one experience when I was in a placement and I was in a first grade class and one of the, I was helping kids write in a journal and they opened their notebook and they flipped to just a random page and started writing. And I, in that moment, I was like, oh my goodness, I would need to teach kids to flip to the next, like flip to the first page and then go to the next one. I don't want to do that. <laughs> so that that's kind of funny, but that's like where I was like, I don't think I want to teach younger grades. And that's what stuck with me. So from then on, I knew I wanted to try and teach an older grade. And I ended up student teaching in a fourth grade class. And it was my dream experience. I had so much fun. I had the absolute uh, most amazing mentor. And there was also like an ed tech in the classroom and she was amazing. And I just learned so much and I still use so much from that experience. But again, I still like, student teaching is amazing and so helpful with learning about the logistics of teaching and even pieces of planning too. Like I definitely worked really hard on my planning but I didn't see some of those other pieces like behavior management was a huge one. And then like other pieces like data collection and thinking about how you're going to meet all of your students needs and differentiation and all of that. I feel like it was mostly like teaching and planning. So then as my student teaching ended, I actually went and took a long-term sub position in a fifth grade classroom for from April, like after April vacation to the end of the school year. And that was a, such a good experience. If you are a college student, I would totally recommend you do that or at least I recommend you subbing because it is a fantastic way to get your feet into different districts and different schools and make schools familiar with you and want to want to hire you. And then also gives you so much experience with like classroom management and how to work with kids and keep them motivated and so on. So that was a really good experience, but it was hard. <laughs> um, I had a hard, and I was, that was the first time that I was like, oh my goodness, classroom management, what is this? <laughs> How do I keep kids engaged? And then from there, I knew I wanted, to, when I was looking for a job, I knew I wanted to stay in the same district and I wanted to hopefully teach an upper grade. So I was looking for jobs and when I was looking, the only jobs that were available were lower grades in the district, but I wanted to be in that district. So I applied and thankfully I got it. It was in a different school than I long-term subbed in, but that was fine. And yeah, so I got the job and it was for a first grade position. 
and my first grade my first year of teaching was amazing i wouldn't change anything but it was hard and i did a lot of things that i learned from that were definitely like not the best but that's okay so my like teaching partner my at classroom ed tech the some support student ed techs and my mentor teachers were so great but ultimately as i taught my first year i just had a lot of trouble with behavior management and i just really didn't love first grade and then also i just really didn't love the school i was in um I think it was mostly, like I said, the people that I was closest with were fantastic, but the morale of the school was just definitely lower. Um, just not a lot of people love teaching. And it's hard to be a new teacher who's so enthusiastic about this position and teaching, and while others are just like, this is not a good career and just moping around. So. That was hard for me, so I started to look for different jobs. And really, I wasn't looking for different jobs, I shouldn't say that. I started to look at a specific district because I knew I wanted to end up in this specific district that I'm currently at. And jobs opened up, so I applied. And I was nervous because I only had a one year of teaching experience, um, and I was like, I don't know, should I just stay? Um, should I get more experience? Will it be better? And I ultimately decided I wanted to be in this this district at some point, so why not try and try it now? And I'm so glad I did because I got my job as a third grade teacher and I've been here ever since. And it's been great. My first year I taught departmentalized. So if you're ever interested in like pros and cons of being departmentalized, let me know because I can definitely film a video about that. And I can film another video about more about my first year of teaching if you're interested in that. But that is kind of my teaching story is like, so we had my first year of third grade, I was departmentalized math teacher. And then ever since um, we've just been self-contained and I have had so much fun. I love the people I work with. I love my school. I love the community. It's been fantastic. So obviously there's been hard parts too, <laughs> but it's been really good. So now I'm going to chat a little bit about why I'm still teaching. Why am I still sticking with this career? Why do I still love this career even when it's hard? Why do I not plan on leaving this career anytime soon? Let's chat about that. Okay, so why am I still teaching? That is the question of the moment, right? Why is anyone still teaching when there is such a teaching problem amongst the country? There are people who still love teaching, and I think a lot of people who are no longer teaching still love teaching too. There are just flaws in the system, and that is for sure the truth. Now, I just kind of want to highlight though, like why I'm still here and why I don't plan on leaving unless something like really shifts. Big reason for me. One, I love and have always loved, this has been my number one reason, the kids. They are so much fun. They, you, it's just like kids are the best. They bring you so much joy. They learn so much. Seeing that growth that they make every day, every year, seeing those light bulbs go off seeing them just try hard things and approach problems and get it and then also like seeing them struggle and not get it and then eventually like they were here one week and then they're somewhere else the next week it's just really 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 amazing to watch there's nothing like seeing a kid develop and seeing them grow and seeing everything that they can accomplish and that's something i've learned for sure as a mom like watching my baby grow has been the most amazing thing of my life and that is definitely the best part of teaching is watching these kids grow 
and understand and develop and being such a huge influence in them in what they do and what they become and really sharing values and thoughts and ideals that you think are going to benefit these kids like I just think I feel like I make and this this is probably like probably a large statement but sometimes I feel like I make a really big impact with these kids and I feel I feel that impact is so huge and so important and that just really sometimes can feel daunting but it really does make my job just feel so valuable and so important and so it's fun for me because of that like I feel so much joy because of what I'm able to do and help and instill in these kids. So that's like my big, big reason. Other reasons why I'm still in the career, um, I'm not gonna lie, I cannot imagine being a parent and having any job other than being a teacher. You get built-in vacations, like you get those holiday breaks and then you get that summer break. And I love that I get so much time with my baby. Yes, it sometimes, especially during the school year and like during those weeks, it doesn't feel like enough, but I love it. I love that I have so much time. There is no other rare, not many other careers that you're going to get that much time like with time off where you do not need to do anything else with your kid. And I just feel like that is very, 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 very valuable. That's why I'm uh, definitely a reason why I'm going to stay in the career. Um, but obviously number one's the kids, but this is also definitely a plus. <laughs> Another reason is I really have, as I have taught, learned some boundaries that I need to keep and ways to kind of routine, add routines to my job and how to make things a little bit easier. I've learned to let go things that I once might have not let go of at the beginning of my teaching career and all of those things. And I think that all of that really helps my home to school relationship and just not getting too burnt out. Now, am I the teacher who leaves right on contract time every day no I'm not and I understand that a lot of people do that and that's great but I don't um, I get to school on contract time but I leave about 45 minutes after contract time and I find it really really valuable I get a lot done and that's 45 minutes that I need to be able to go home and not worry so much once I get home. This has been definitely a huge shift for me. In the past, I did a ton of work at home after school hours and this year, I haven't. I really don't work much on the weekends or at home unless I have something that I need to finish up. Like. Um, sometimes when I need to finish slides and I haven't finished my slides, which are the ways that we structure our lessons throughout the week, I'll finish them up at home at night. But aside th from that, I don't bring grading home really anymore. I haven't at all this year. I don't really do any planning at home because we plan as a team. I don't do emails at home. I don't do anything else from home really. So that has been really super helpful is I've just learned how to keep my boundaries. So I feel like I now understand the ways to balance things more and and since I'm able to balance things more, it's been working out great. <laughs> and then I guess the last reason why I'm going to continue to be a teacher, why I'm still going to be a teacher is it's really good for me and my mental health. Um, I know that so many people want to be a stay-at-home mom and I think that that is amazing and the hardest and most amazing career that you can do. But I don't think that I could ever fully be a stay-at-home mom. It's 
exhausting and a lot to just be with your baby all day. And that's why I love having the vacations and the summers because it's amazing to have that extra time. But I don't think I'd ever want to do it myself just full time. It's just I missed when I was on maternity leave, I really missed that like extra human interaction. I really missed um, seeing friends and talking to colleagues. I missed getting to work with kids and just doing something and thinking about something other than being a mom and getting to do fun things and plan things and doing things that you're just passionate about. So obviously I'm passionate about my baby. I love my baby with all of my being, but I, that is another big piece about why I'm still going to be a teacher is because I love having something. I love having a job. That is something that I really personally enjoy. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video today. I know it was just kind of like a chit chatty video. So I'll try and film a vlog next week because I've had two chit chatty videos in a row and I really do enjoy filming vlogs, but thanks for chatting with me today. I would love to hear from you all why you became a teacher, some of your teaching story, and why you're still a teacher if you are. Um, I think it's important to kind of continue to share why we're still here. And yeah, so thanks again for watching my video today. I would love it if you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can see any future videos from me and I will chat with you all again soon. Have the best weekend.